This is the Mercedes E-Class Estate, and you're probably thinking it's little more than an E-Class saloon with a bit tags on at the back. But whilst that is undeniably true, it is a little bit more complex than that. You see, while the E-Class Saloon fights it out in the fleet sector and is mostly driven by executives, the estate has to please families too. It needs to look as good in the company car park as it is at hauling the kids and the dog on holiday. So let's see whether it's any good for that family vacation, shall we? Now, Mercedes E-Class estates have always had big boots, but this new one is no different because Buy one of these and you could probably set yourself up as a removals firm at the weekends because it is vast back here. Now there's 640 litres on offer, which means this boot is larger than the BMW 5 Series Touring, the Audi A6 Avant and the brand new Volvo V90. But let's look at the details. So there's a wide boot opening. It's very square. There's no load lip whatsoever. There's all sorts of little features in here. So there's a nice storage facility under here. We've got some tie down hooks. We've got some netting here. You can also fold the rear seats at the press of a button. So let's just fold that one down and this one. And you'll notice you've got an absolutely flat loading area, which is brilliant for large items. Now, I'm not going to do the usual car by suitcase test. I'm actually going to get in here to show you how big it actually is. And look at this, look. Now I'm about five foot 10 and I could actually sleep back here. It is so big. I think that is a pretty good boot, don't you? Okay, space in the back. Well, first of all, let's put these seats back up again, which is quite straightforward. They're not too heavy. And let's hop in. And just like the E-Class Saloon, there is lots of space back here. Now that seat is set up in my driving position. I'm just over five foot 10. And look at the amount of knee room I've got. And because this is the estate model, the longer roof line means I've got a little bit more headroom, even though we've got a glass panoramic roof. Headroom is pretty good. You can fit three people. They have to haul themselves over this transmission tunnel, but it's not too much of a problem. And once here, it's very comfortable and headroom is still pretty good. We've got easily accessible ice fix points here, which is great for child seats. Storage wise, well, we've got some pockets behind the seats. We've got an armrest with a large cubby and two cup holders. And there's also, of course, air conditioning controls here with vents in the pillars to keep you nice and cool back here. Choosing which E-Class to go for couldn't be any simpler. Entry-level SE cars come well equipped with leather seats, heated front seats, ambient lighting with 64 colours, a powered tailgate, roof rails, a parking camera, cruise control and keyless start. AMG line like our car adds a sports body kit and 19 inch alloys, while the sporty Mercedes AMG E43 gets an even more aggressive exterior styling and black Nappa leather seats with red seat belts. The good news continues up front because the new E-Class's interior is not only a step up from the old E-Class's rather angular and austere dashboard, but also compared to this car's rivals because the quality in here is really top notch. The plastics across the top of the doors feel great. We've got the artificial leather across the top of the dash and that feels really good to touch as well. And the plastics are just really nice. The design is very similar to the S-Class Mercedes and the entry-level E-Class estate comes with a 8.1-inch screen in the centre here with Garmin sat-nav. And let's be honest, a Garmin sat-nav and a tiny little screen is not really befitting a car of this class. Now, six-cylinder cars come with a 12.3-inch screen like we've got here, and you can also upgrade that with the four-cylinder cars. It's controlled by the rotary controller down here and the touch-sensitive pad here. And overall, it works quite well. Not quite as well as the BMW iDrive, but still very well nevertheless. The less. You can also upgrade it again to another 12.3 inch screen in front of you and that acts as your TFT dials and they're controlled by touch sensitive pads on the steering wheel. Go for these two screens and these pads and you get an ultra modern and slick interior. Storage is good in the E-Class estate. There's a large glove box, there's a couple of cup holders in the centre console, a large armrest that also has USB charging ports for your devices, and the door bins pass the car buyer big bottle test. 
there's a plentiful supply of engines to choose from too. For petrol power, you're limited to a plug-in hybrid badged E350e that emits as low as 49 grams per kilometer of CO2. Or, for the time being, the range-topping Sports E43 variant that's powered by a twin-turbo 3-litre V6, developing just under 400 brake horsepower. But it's the diesels that will power most E-Class estates. There's an E200D with a 2-litre four-cylinder diesel with 148 brake horsepower, or the really smooth E350D with a 3-litre V6 diesel. All E-Classes come with a 9-speed auto gearbox. This is the E220D and it's the best all-rounder in the range. Up front is a 2-litre four-cylinder diesel engine pushing out 191 brake horsepower. And you can have this car with rear-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. And there's only one automatic gearbox option and it's silky smooth. However, that's not the best thing about this car. It is the refinement. Now, when you're just cruising around, you only get a faint hum from the diesel engine. And even when you start to accelerate, there's only a little bit of diesel grumble. On paper, the E220D in AMG line seems economical at 61 mpg. However, over 400 miles, we average 46.5, which is still good for the size of the car. The E-Class has light and accurate steering, and for the most part, the ride is good. You can spend £1,495 on air suspension, which does a good job at keeping the car level when it's fully loaded. What's not so good is that with the AMG line's larger wheels, it's not as comfortable as it should be. Over anything other than super smooth roads, it feels unsettled and still thumps into potholes. There's no way you could actually call this car sporty to drive. Now, whilst Mercedes will sell you an E43 version with stiffened suspension and more direct steering, and there's bound to be a full-fat AMG E63 along at some point as well, the E-Class is far outweighed by the BMW 5 Series Touring because the BMW is far more involving to drive. However, personally speaking, I don't find that too much of a problem because I like my estate cars to be comfortable and costing to drive. And this, along with the Volvo V90, are easily the best in the class at that, but if you do want something more thrilling to drive, you're going to have to go for the BMW. Like the Volvo, the Mercedes is a safe car. There's a wealth of safety kit you can add, like blind spot monitoring, active brake assist, evasive steering and much, much more. Now, to get a lot of that kit, you're going to have to be prepared to pay for it. Now, as standard, the E-Class comes quite well equipped, perfectly in line with its rivals. However, if you start ticking the option boxes, this becomes a seriously expensive car to buy. That said, Mercedes E-Class estates tend to be very desirable when you come to sell them. So the more equipment that you've specified, the more money you're likely to keep hold of. And lastly, I fear Mercedes has tread a careful path of the looks. It's good looking for sure, but it's outstarred by the Volvo V90. And at a quick glance, you could be forgiven for thinking this is the smaller Mercedes C-Class estate. It's not much of a surprise that the estate version of the E-Class is an excellent car because the saloon is such a class act. On top of the saloon's efficient engines and quality cabin, the estate adds the biggest boot in the class and compared to all of its rivals, it's the best blend of practicality and comfort. If you like the look of the E-Class Estate, then check out its rivals. Click the video on the left for the super smooth Volvo V90, or on the right for the fun to drive BMW 5 Series Touring. Click the play icon for our latest video and on our logo to subscribe.